terminal ballistic deals with a variety of targets which are normally used either in suicide cases or in homicide cases and they can be broadly divided into two categories non-living targets and living targets so far as non-living targets are concerned they can be clothes of the victim which become extremely important when the person committing suicide does not use parts which are not covered with clothes such as temple head mouth etc when he uses his chest which is covered with clothes they assume great importance would be glass panes wooden walls wooden doors glass doors car window panes all these targets are normally examined under the heading of terminal ballistics because they penetrate and the penetration studies are the purview of terminal ballistics the study of ricochet of bullet is also carried out in the same subject that is terminal ballistics the living targets are birds animals and human beings none of these is a uniform medium as far as human beings are concerned they have different vulnerability on different parts of the body because body is a non uniform medium and consists of 80% of water and that too distributed unevenly thus various parts of the body have different vulnerabilities as far as the injuries are concerned the most vulnerable portions could be liver heart lungs etc whereas sometime a bullet may pass through the arm of a person and he does not suffer fatal injury thus the vulnerability of different parts of the human being are different and so is the case with animals and birds Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the phenomenon of breaking of glass with firearm projectiles, the mechanism of penetration of projectile on tampered or toughened glass, and will learn about the deflection of bullet by glass. Terminal ballistics deal with the impact of projectiles upon the target. as well as its working inside the target many targets are sent to forensic labs for their examination when they get involved in crime cases after getting hit by projectiles fired from firearms resulting in injuries to them targets are involved especially in cases of suicide or murder and are quite large in number these target can be classified into two main groups number 1 non living targets number 2 living targets let us see what are non living targets non living targets frequently involved in murder or suicide cases are number 1 window panes and glass doors number 2 wind screens of cars which are made of safety glass or laminated glass number 3 tempered in the car side windows number 4 clothes become targets when a person commits suicide and fires at his own chest or gets fired at his chest in murder cases number 5 bullet proof vests or jackets number 6 ricochet of bullets from surfaces of wooden and brick walls it can take place from wall surface or from wind screen of cars as well 
Glass is widely used for a variety of applications. In buildings, it is used for windows, in households, for a variety of articles ranging from kitchenware ornaments, bangles, and decorative pieces. It is extensively used in automobiles for headlights and windows, etc. In a majority of the housebreaking cases, automobiles, accidents, homicides, hit and run, cases, etc., glass is one of the most common form of evidence. In all such cases, glass pieces or fragments are likely to be found on clothes, shoes, or hair of the suspect. This is because of backscattering of glass pieces. Pieces of glass are invariably found on the clothes, hair, or shoes of the victim, also due to scattering effect of the impact. Sometimes, during the course of police investigations, it may be of the importance to determine whether a window pane has been smashed from inside or outside and the way it has been smashed. Such circumstances arise, for example, in allegedly shop breaking where investigations suggest that the allegation may be false and the theft being internal. If it can be shown that glass allegedly to have been broken by the intruders, which has in fact been broken from the inside, the suspicion of the investigator as the truth of the allegation would be confirmed. Questions of this nature frequently arise in arson cases, insurance frauds and fake bulgaries. Sometimes more serious cases may arise where a pane of glass may be found broken under suspicious circumstances. The task of the investigator is materially assisted if he knows what has broken the window. Pieces from the broken pane or the hole often shows marks which are characteristic of the destructive force and if correctly interpreted, these indications will give positive answers. Now let us discuss living targets. See, living targets can be animals or human beings, especially when firearms are used for murders or suicide resulting in injuries on the body as well as inside the body. Human body or animal body is not a uniform medium. It is about 80% water in case of human beings, which is not uniformly distributed. At places, there are bones. At other places, veins, nerves, muscles, or blood. Places which would making vulnerability different places. Some non-living targets, including glass, would be discussed in this part, whereas living targets would be discussed in other chapter of the terminal ballistic. Now let us see breaking of glass with firearm projectiles. A small fast projectile such as a bullet and a slow projectile such as a stone produce different effects. The fast projectile produces bending of the glass but it is unusually much overstated. This results in the center of the glass being blown out. When the center is blown out, the hole on the side of impact is smaller than that on the side opposite to the impact. 0.22 lead air gun will make a hole in glass but will not be able to penetrate half inch glass plate when the velocity of projectile is 4 feet per second. For penetration of half inch glass plate, a minimum velocity of projectile required is 600 feet per second. For a human skin, the pellets having a minimum velocity of 20 feet per second would be able to penetrate it. Experiments with 0.22 rifle shows clearly all important actions of firing which are number one ejection of large cone of glass from the side opposite to the side of firing clearly visible on the exit hole. Number two, creation of entry hole, which is small. Number three, exit hole is slightly large in size. Number four, presence of radial lines on glass pane. Number five, presence of concentric fractures. When a high velocity bullet strikes a glass plate or sheet 
a round crater hole surrounded by radial and concentric fractures is formed on the glass. The hole is wider at the exit side and gives a cone-like appearance and hence it is called cone. The edge of broken glass contains a number of curved lines called stress determine which hole was made first. A radial fracture in glass travels from some distance and if it meets another radial fracture that has been formed earlier, it will be stopped. Thus, if the fracture lines from one bullet hole are stopped by the fracture lines of another bullet hole, it may be concluded that the later was made first, laminated glass as target and its penetration by projectile laminated glass consists of two sheets of glass bonded together with a plastic film. When it is struck by a bullet, will first bulge away from the site of impact. This will cause a series of radial cracks. As the glass continues to bulge, concentric cracks are produced, the quantity of which determine by the energy given up by the bullet to the glass. The quantity of crushed glass round the periphery of the entrance hole is also a function of the energy given up. Easily deformed or low velocity bullets such as 0.32 SNW and 0.38 SNW will generally have insufficient velocity to penetrate laminated windscreen or bank teller glass, giving up all their energy on impact. As a result of the transfer of energy, the glass pound, the impact site and both on the contact and remote glass laminates will be crushed. Glass will be thrown off the rear face from the remote side of the glass with considerable force. Crushed glass will also be projected some distance back from the contact site towards the fire. Often the laminate will have been stretched beyond its elastic limit and will have been in the process. The torn plastic laminate and the quantity of glass on the remote side will often give the distinct impression of penetration. In some cases, it has been observed that the attacker who made use of firearms and bullets got injured seriously when they wanted to commit a robbery in a bank. In another case, an innocent teller in a bank sitting behind a security sheet of glass met her death although there had been no penetration of any projectile through the glass. Now let us see penetration of tempered or toughened glass. The mechanism of penetration of some wad different as once the surface is punctured, the glass shatters into tiny pieces. Radial cracks spreads out from the point of impact to the various edges of glass, crossing, linking as they go. They are definitely a degree bulging away from the impact site, realign in the production of peripheral crushing rather than concentric crack rings. Determination of the impact site, caliber of weapon and type is often rendered impossible due to disintegration of the glass round the bullet entry hole. Important point to be specially noted is that tempered glass can take heavy impacts if spread over large area. A low velocity steel ball will however have a sufficient high point of energy to completely crack a pane of tempered glass. It is unusual to find enough of the entry hole. Left in block to determine angle of entry due to disintegration of the tempered glass. Now let us see deflection of a bullet by glass. It is generally considered that a bullet will after penetrating glass experience a large deviation from its normal flight. Glass panes crack or burst by the action of heat show characteristic long wavy fractures and can easily be distinguished from the ones broken by projectiles. 
in such cases the curved lines are very feebly developed and generally the glass splinter fall in the direction of the source of the heat this is a very important point in the investigation of arson cases because the discovery of the glass splinters inside a room may lead the investigation to believe that the window was smashed from outside which would be incorrect sometimes glass panes break without having been exposed to any outside action the cause of this is that strain may be left on glass during its manufacture and these can cause a sudden breakage even without any external stimulus let us discuss cases that are illustrated in this chapter case number 1 a police officer noted that a car is as dragging one of his colleagues he fired at the relevant car through the rear wind screen of the said car dragging his colleague though the shot was aimed at the driver it got split into pieces after passing through the tempered glass the large piece passed through the headrest and into the head of the driver the other clipped the top of the passenger seat lodging in passenger's shoulder since there had been no intervening object which could have caused the break only the glass case number 2 a bank cabin got fitted with banded proof glass which was of laminated type after being given the money the robber armed with a swan off shotgun walked up to one of the tellers and shot her through the security glass the spalling from the rear face of the glass was severe enough to kill her it is worth mention that the glass involved in this case was laminated one with three sheet of glass and two sheet of plastics to reduce scratching the outside layer were both made up of glass in modern bullet resistance glass the non impact side always consists of a sheet of clear acrylic plastic which is heavily bonded to the last layer of the glass this will limit the degree of spalling very considerably making the person sitting behind it much safer now let us discuss case number 3 in a case involving a more modern types of bullet resistant glass which did have a sheet of clear acrylic plastic bonded to the non strike face the teller in this case was an avid shooter and he just happened to have a .22 caliber pistol loaded and kept under the counter the shooter had been armed with a .38 special caliber revolver When the teller pulled out his gun, the robber immediately opened fire, as did the teller. When the smoke disappeared, there were eight point two two bullet from the teller's pistol, but embedded in the anti-spalling of sheet, and six completely smashed point three eight special bullets lying on the floor by the robber's feet. His hands and face had been cut to shred. by the shards of glass thrown back from the glass pane and he was taken to a hospital with one eye missing the teller remounted safe because of the anti spalling measures introduced in the laminated glass now dear students let us summarize this chapter so in this chapter we have learned that terminal ballistic deals with the impact of projectiles upon the target as well as its working inside the target we have come to know that targets are involved especially in cases of suicide or murder and are quite large in number these targets can be classified into two main groups number 1 non living targets number 2 living targets a small fast projectile such as bullet and a slow projectile such as a stone produce different effects and when a high velocity bullet strikes a glass plate or sheet a round crater or hole surrounded by radial and 
concentric fractures is formed on the glass. Simultaneously, we have learned that radial cracks spread out from the point of impact to the various edges of glass cross-linking as they go. Lastly, we have learned in this chapter that sometimes glass panes break without having been exposed to any outside action. The cause of this is that strain may be left on glass during its manufacture and these can cause a sudden breakage even without any external stimulus.